Okay, so SpaceMet have sent me this rather nice looking laptop to test. This is the Musebook and it's got something very unusual about it. The processor is not ARM and it's not x86. It's actually a RISC-V processor. And this is a free and open standard that companies can customize and develop. And there's no licensing fees, no vendor lock-in. And it's aimed more at startups and education and developers than end users at this stage. But as time goes on, RISC-V could become very popular. So because it's a very power efficient chip, the battery life has been really good. I've been using this a bit like my MacBook and haven't really thought about the battery and I've left it on and I've sort of come back to it. And the battery life has really held well. And they also haven't scrimped on connectivity. So on one side we've got USB 3, but on the other side we've got a couple of USB-C ports, another USB-A port, headphone jack and a micro SD slot. And one of these ports is Thunderbolt, so it supports DisplayPort and also fast USB charging. I'm not sure what speed, so I'll try my Ugreen charger because this is a very fast charger. And if I plug it in, now I'm not sure which port is the one because it's got a lightning symbol right in the middle of both, so I can't really tell. So 35.6 watts. Let's try the other connector just to see if that one charges as well. So yeah, that's charging as well, 35.6 watts, and then gone under 33.6 watts. I don't know if both of these are Thunderbolt then. They certainly both charge the same. Let's try a monitor with it. So this little 14 inch WiMAX it display, and let's try the front port. Yeah, that one works. So does the other one. It's waking it up, so it's providing power to it, but no video signal. So it's the front one. That's the one. Design-wise, I like the color blue on it. I like the little logo on the top there as well. I'm not sure if there's any fan in there. Uh, it has got little tiny screws, so I should be able to have a look inside it. So I've got it working with my monitor, as you can see here, and it's on proper dual monitor support. So. If I wanted to drag this up to the other monitor, you can see it appears at the top. But I did have a little bit of trouble. If I plug this directly into my capture device, like that, so that's USB-C to an HDMI adapter, it detects the display. It does wake it up, but you don't get any picture on it. But if I go through my HDMI splitter, which has actually got an HDCP stripper on it, so that's to, to beat copyright. That's better, so you can see it's coming through fine now. Uh, and this is only because I'm going through a capture device. If I plug straight into the monitor, it's absolutely fine. So I've got another monitor to the left here, and if I unplug this, so this is the basically USB-C to HDMI adapter, and just plug it straight in here without this stripper, you can see it's already waking up my monitor, and it's on. So I'm going to switch over to screen capture just to show all the specs. So if we launch the web browser, and let's go full screen. So this link has got various different specs in it. There is a 16 gig model of this machine. Now if I do Control alt t and use NeoFetch, we can see the version I've been sent is an 8 gig model, 8 core, 1.6 gigahertz, and the Operating system is Bianboo OS, which is their own operating system, but it's based on Ubuntu and it's Debian as well, so it's familiar to me being a Raspberry Pi user. And you can see the resolution of the desktop is 1920 by 1080. So let's go through the full specs on here. See they do a silver version as well. So 8-core RISC-V with two tops of AI processing power. Supports dual screen display, which I've shown. So that's a 14.1 inch screen, it feels smaller than that. No, I've just measured it and that is right, just because it's got very small frames around it, I guess. 1080-60, USB-C with display port, DDR4X RAM, 512 storage it says, but if I go to files, so what does it say on here? So there's nothing on that one, and this is 128 gig. So micro SD slot, so Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. The Wi-Fi does seem to be decent because in this room I'm quite far away from my main router and it has been working fine. Two times USB 3. So one of the USB 3s is a full function port and the other one is an OTG port. 
and it does support, yeah, so they both support fast charging, which is what I found in my tests. And it's got a debug interface, a Muse 8-pin developer interface featuring two embedded buttons for hardware reset and upgrades. 1080 camera. I wonder if there's a camera app on here. Oh yeah, Cheese is installed. There we go, so there's the screen. Let's hold something up so you can see. Yeah, that camera looks all right. It's focusing pretty well. Built-in dual microphones and stereo speakers. Full keyboard with touch pads. Optional fingerprint on certain models. I haven't got a fingerprint on mine. No. Metal body, 1360 grams. So they do also Fedora as an operating system for it, but I've got the Ubuntu one and 38 watt hour battery. I do like that they've put USB-C charging and also that they've got two ports that USB-C charge because that's often a point that lets down laptops. So here's the debug cable. And you can get just the board, it looks like. That's interesting. If you're looking to build your own mainboard for framework laptop, that's the one that Linus Tech Tips is uh, involved in. The one that you can basically upgrade. That's interesting. Framework laptop. So I wonder which one it goes in, because look, laptop 12, laptop 13, laptop 16, and this is a 14. So if we picked the 13, so if we look at that and then we go back to their listing. Oh, I missed that bit before. So it does say framework laptop 13. Wow, that is interesting. I wonder if the board I've got in this laptop is the same one as they sell for the framework laptop. Be interesting to have a look in a minute. And then the debug expansion card. And there's various different pages. I'll put loads of links in the description. They've given me a load. I've got a, a Word document I've created. There we go. So there's various different links for forums, Reddit. There's a YouTube channel as well, which is here. Although I think it's all in Chinese. Hello, yeah, but they've got subtitles. Now I've also installed Sysbench to do some testing on this. So let's close down the web browser. So let's run this and I need to change this to eight threads. With Sysbench they call cores threads. So you just put the number of cores in there. So we also ran the same Sysbench test on my Raspberry Pi 4 4 gig model. And that's got quad core, so four threads and I got 2300.07 on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the RISC-V processor 2571.45 so faster than a Raspberry Pi 4 definitely not as fast as a Raspberry Pi 5 but then we also have the MPU but I didn't really have a decent way of being able to test that with a RISC-V processor this one's a memory test Let's do that test for longer, so this should be 5 minutes, and we'll see how hot it gets. So currently it hasn't gone above 46, it has now 48. So you can see all the cores are maxed out at 100%, and the temperature is holding around about 60. Okay, it must be coming near to an end now. Okay, so that's all finished, it didn't get, or oh, 61. Uh, and if I fill the base of the laptop, yeah, it's, it's not hot at all. In fact, my iPad gets hotter than that, definitely. So in the configuration center, so we've got all sorts of things in here. So brightness control, which is working on my display, but you can't see it. Date and time, desktop. So we've got various different configurations here. The screen configuration doesn't have all the settings I want it to have. So this is working as an extended display. And for the purpose of this screen capture, I wanted to show you it as a duplicate, but I haven't been able to work out how to do it. I did try in terminal uh, and I used XRandar to recognize the screen, so HDMI A uh, and DSi1. But then when I use this command, it comes up with an error. So I don't know how to do that. I did have a look to see if I could find a a display manager program but um, I wasn't sure if any of them will work with RISC-V because RISC-V is, is such a new processor in comparison to, to ARM and x86. So I think we're going to shut this down and have a look inside. So in taking all the screws out we've got a couple which are really long just on the very corners and all the others are really short ones and this just pops off so no need for these. And that's all metal. So no fans, 
it's uh, just a heat spreader here and this is obviously covering the whole board so if we unscrew what four or five screws here so it was very effective cooling but uh, I would imagine it must have used thermal throttling to keep it to 60 degrees as there's no active cooling when I was doing that stress test I mean under normal use I'm sure it's no issue at all so this should just lift off it does uh, and then we've got a couple of thermal pads nothing on their CPU so the yeah the CPU is there so there's a raised bit but no paste and no thermal pad Tempted to put some paste in there anyway and so we've got yeah I would imagine that's probably something to do with power and maybe that's the RAM and this must be the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and the antennas going out to the sides and obviously all the extras things like display and the battery and so on we've got an NVMe drive there as well let's put this back on first in fact I'm going to put some paste on there it might be just that mine is a, a pre-production one because also I've got the 8 gig and also the 128 drive and it's really 512 and 16 gig so let's pop that back on there we go so the RAM's not upgradable but the model that's advertised is the 16 gig one and it is quite a decent sized battery as I say a very efficient processor and the battery life seems to be amazing it really seems to last well so the NVMe drive nice to see just a standard slot only supports 2280 though by the looks of it obviously you can get adapters for shorter drives so nothing I recognize on there but this drive again might not be the one that comes because they normally come with a 512 mine is like a pre-production unit I guess but good to see it's upgradable unlike my MacBook which uh, I can't upgrade the storage in this one so nice as well that it doesn't have to snap together so all of this just pops on so you don't have to kind of force it together to click it into place you just put all the screws back in yeah that's all back together so the web browser isn't the fastest but the video playback is pretty reasonable so this is running at 1440 so out of 2900 frames it's up to 101 and it isn't very noticeable at that rate and it works a lot better at 1080 obviously and the sound is reasonable for a laptop it's quite a decent amount of volume so I'm just running the five minute Sysmark benchmark for the second time you can see all the cores are running at full and P-Sensor is only showing 33 degrees uh, so I'm not sure if the thermal paste has made a huge difference but uh, it's definitely cooler I've got it next to my MacBook just to show you, you know, sort of similarities with size and the look of the keyboard and everything like that. Both devices have uh, no active cooling, so they're both completely silent, which I really like. And I didn't really show much of the interface, so you can see it's LXQT, and you've got all these little icons down the bottom side here. And on this side, we can launch any of the apps that are here, and you can obviously type if you want an app. But we'll let it finish that test and we'll see what the temperature's gone up to. But it's still only at 34 degrees. And this is, so it was running flat out for five minutes and it's now running for another five minutes flat out. Okay, so that's just finished the test. You can see the cores ramped down and it's still only got to 36 degrees. So thermal paste for the win. So thanks very much to SpaceMit for sending me this to test. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.